Hello, sweet friends. How are you guys doing today? I want to welcome you back. And this is now day four of my five day series, Stepping Up to the Call. Who are you? Oh yeah, this week has been so much fun and I want to thank you guys for coming and joining me. This series has been in celebration of, get this, ta -da 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 -da, if I were, uh, that doesn't even sound like a drum roll, does it? Okay, it's in celebration of my new YouTube channel. I am so excited to uh, launch my little space on YouTube. I've been wanting to do it, although I have had fear and trepidation because the last thing I feel comfortable with is on video. And here I am, you guys. Um, somebody needs to hear that just because the topic today is going to dig a little deeper here for all of us. But anyway, I do want to welcome you guys. This is day four. And you can find the other three days of our series, and you can even find tomorrow's and today's um, right there on my YouTube channel. You can find that at cindyrushton.com forward slash YouTube. You guys, there you're going to find all kinds of goodies coming up. It is now my space where we can have studies, we can have live um, webinars, we can have prayer times, we can um, also like whenever I'm at different events, we're going to be broadcasting live from the events that I'm at. So definitely join me, subscribe so that you get notifications. In fact, I love that on my phone, I have my YouTube set up to give me notifications. That's one thing I want. When I subscribe to some of these things I, um, on YouTube, I want to know when they're going live or when they have a new video. And so all you have to do is add those notifications to your favorite device and you will get updates. If you don't get updates that way, hey, I also have an email list and you can find that at cindyrushton.com. Just look for my list, staying connected. When you join that, I have a fun gift for you. It is called, um, a, it's a video and audio on the power of an hour. And that is red hot right off the video reel. <laughs> I, I, so go over there, check me out again at cindyrushton.com or again, my YouTube channel at cindyrushton.com forward slash YouTube. Well, you guys, I am ready to dig in to this series, um, back into this series. Today is again, day four. It is entitled, Who Are You? What's That in Your Hand? Okay, hang with me in a minute. We're going to dig in. But if you have missed the other four days, day one, we talked about who are you? Yes, you. You. Oh, yeah. God has a call for you. He has a very amazing, special purpose for you. Um, day two, we talked about, by the way, perfect pre that you are perfectly prepared, preserved, and um, positioned you are. And, and that topic that day was perfect preservation, preparation, and positioning for completely imperfect people. Relate? I do. Guess how I got that topic. And so um, day three was, who are you? Who is with you? Because it's not about us. It's about him. And then today, I am so excited to dig back in. We are going to dig in and we're going to hit it at Exodus chapter four. In Exodus chapter four, um, we're picking up on the story of Moses and just some background. Um, I believe Exodus is such an amazing, amazing, amazing book of the Bible. It's one of my favorites, especially when you're looking at doing the thing that God has called you to do. And this, we're picking up where we have seen how God preserved Moses. He um, prepared him by um, placing him in, in the home of Pharaoh, at, at the king of Egypt. At that time, Egypt was in a world empire, you guys. And so he was literally um, preserved from death and taken into the home of the Pharaoh as, get this, um, Pharaoh's daughter found him and go back on the videos and we, we talk about this or dig into the study of Exodus one through three. You are going to love it. But anyway, he was being preserved. But what really stood out to me is that Moses, who would later have to go back and deal with the Pharaoh, which is what we're going to be talking a little bit about today. Um, he actually grew up at, as being raised by 
Pharaoh's daughter. So in other words, Pharaoh was his grandpa, his papa. Come on, you guys. Let's get this in our head and think about this for a moment. The, and, and for ancient Egypt, one of the things that they believed, they believed that their pharaohs were gods. They were gods. And so if you can just think of the positioning, there's so many places you could go with that. What a counterfeit when you and I are truly God's kids. We are his kids, his beloved children. And he has actually betrothed us to his very son and given us full rights as heirs. We have full rights. And so I just love how much we parallel with Moses because Moses, the whole story here, there are little nuggets along the way. Today is no different. In fact, today, if you'll turn with me to Exodus chapter, chapter four, um, I'm going to read it from the message Bible. And, um, of course I like it because it does have that story feel to it, but I really recommend reading any passage of scripture in as many versions as you can get your hands on. I usually reread and reread and reread. And a lot of times when you hear me teach, I even do this, but today I'm sticking to one version and I'm going to share just this much, this much today, because here in Exodus chapter four and in verse one and two, we see here, um, we see God asking Moses, uh, Moses objects to all the things that God has said. God has said, he first of all has called him. And then he said, I'm going with you. Let me just tell you guys, that's enough for us to step into our calling. That's enough. But here's the really amazing thing is what Moses finds out. He objected. They won't trust me, meaning the Israelites. His backstory is that he had a backstory, a really, really scandalous backstory. This isn't that he wasn't prepared perfectly. It wasn't that he wasn't preserved and prepared and even positioned perfectly. No, it was that when he did step out, he stepped out in Moses. He didn't step out in the power of his design. He didn't step out in using what um, God was going to eventually use, which was, first of all, his, his, his yes. Second of all, that God was going to be with him. And then third of all, he's going to use the ordinary stuff about Moses. God knew who Moses was and he called him. He called him. I just think that's beautiful. So here he is. Moses objected. They won't trust me. They won't listen to a word I say. They're going to say, God appeared to him. Hardly. <laughs> okay. How many of you say, I feel his pain? You know what I mean? Yes. But here's what God said. What's in your hand? And Moses answered, a staff. Okay. We're going to stop here. That's all the Bible I'm going to read. I do invite you every time I teach to always, always use this as an invitation to a conversation with God. And um, today is definitely no, no, no different. In fact, this afternoon, my plans, I'm taking myself on a little girl, me and God date, and we are going to go and we're going to be digging into the word. I cannot wait. I have worked hard all week on different things and for school and for my, uh, the different things I've been having as my to-do list. And I am really counting down to take myself to a beautiful place. Just watch my Facebook and you'll see. I'm going somewhere amazing and I am going to be there with my beloved. And so um, I believe he's wanting to call you into, he's wanting to take you away and let this be an invitation to a conversation with him. But here's some truth that I, as your fellow friend, your cheerleader along your way, I, I want to get real with you that here's what, this conversation goes like, again, they're not going to believe me. They're not going to listen to me. They're not going to, why would they, why would you use me? In other words, what, you know, do you know how they're going to respond to me? And God says, <laughs> what's in your hand? Now I want to ask you what's in your hand. What is it? We're going to unpack it. Don't worry. But here, think about this. This is simply a staff. 
a shepherd's staff, an ordinary stick that became an extraordinary tool. Whew, is that good? It's, I'm talking about it's an everyday tool. This is an everyday tool that he used with, as he was shepherding sheep outside. That is a Monday. Not, there's nothing interesting about it. There's, I mean, even though we can go into the scripture and we can read where, uh, where David was a shepherd and Moses is a shepherd and Jesus was a shepherd, uh, that we read the different illustrations that they use that they, they likened it to, let's just get real. Let's just get real. He was out tending sheep. Have you ever had to tend the animals and you get out there and you're around animals? They're animals. It's everyday work. There's not anything interesting about that. This would be like me saying, hey, your scrub butt brush that you're washing your dishes with. It's the, it, come on, let's get real about it. His tool was nothing interesting. It was dull. It was lifeless. It had nothing to write home about. This is not like, hey, you're about, everybody, I am having a shepherd staff ministry. No, no. It's not like you would have a big glistening commercial about using your shepherd staff. Have you ever seen one? Maybe you have, but I mean, I'm thinking, hmm. Not like they're going to probably have that being featured on the, the buying network. You know what I'm saying? This is humdrum, boring, monotonous, nothing to write home about, nothing to broadcast on the news. I'm talking about not even the fake news is going to broadcast this. It's a day-to-day -day tool. It's a routine, unremarkable, ordinary, just completely ordinary tool. But I assure you that as Moses is standing there in awe in the presence of the great I am, that I am just imagining this scene for a moment. Think about it. He's in the presence of Jehovah, who has just said, I'm going with you. I got a call for you. It's time for you to go do what I called you to do. And, and, I, and he's, he's got this calling and he's in awe. God says he's going with him. And, he, and he's the name that Moses is to carry. Talk about some restoration and reconciliation. It's just beautiful. But then he's going, well, but they're not going to believe me. And God says, what's in your hand? An ordinary, everyday tool. Soak it in. And then today, I want to ask you, what's in your hand? What is it that you carry? What is it? What is it? it, it I mean, I'm talking about that ordinary thing that you think, oh my goodness, I've got in trouble for this all my life because that happens to be mine. I've got in trouble all my life for talking too much. I've got on more people's nerves from talking too much. And here I am coming before you celebrating my YouTube channel. Yeah, I told you I was going to come back around to that. I can't even tell you how hard this was for me to do this. Even the one thing that I love about my Zoom, my Zoom um, co group coaching and coachings and my classes and, and my challenges is that I see you guys in there. This is something that I'm recording me. And let me tell you, I still say, why me? Who me? What me? You guys, what I do is very ordinary. It's what I've got in trouble for all my life. I remember my dad making a joke. My dad, my father has passed away and I can, I can just see him giggling in heaven because I remember one day we were talking and he said, Cindy, I can't believe people pay you to speak. You know how much you stayed in trouble when you were in school? And yeah, I stayed in trouble. Not because of my grades, but because I would get that little check on my report card every single time talks too much. Come on. That's my ordinary thing. That's my ordinary thing. I have to, to, to turn the video on right here for you guys right now. Do you know how, what it takes to do that? I just have to think, I'm just going to talk to them. I'm just going to share with them. I'm just going to share with them my heart. This, I, this is like us having a cup of coffee, a cup of tea together. That's where I have to go with this. I'm just being real. How about you? What's your ordinary thing? Uh, you know what's also kind of funny? Ever since I was a little girl, I always 
always um, loved having pen and paper and, and having my little journals. Right here, I have got my little journals right here. I love writing ideas down. I love developing those ideas. I, I mean, but I consider this just ordinary, everyday life. Come on. Just this past week, one, um, I, I was speaking with some friends and one was sharing how she was really struggling with her ministry. And she said that she has so many ideas, she doesn't know what to do. And I shared with her that, you know, I was actually working, get this, on a topic for a webinar that we're going to be hosting Monday. We're going to host it Monday at 10 a.m. And it's a webinar and it's going to be the top, top blah, blah, blah. it's going to be titled 30 minutes to done, 30 minutes to done. And so I want to invite you guys to join that. But what I was telling her is that just those ideas, if you will trust yourself and if you will use what's ordinary inside of your heart, you may think that nobody else would ever want to hear what you know. But trust me, somebody out there is crying out, just like for Moses. They were tr crying out for freedom. He was experiencing, even though he's on the backside of the desert, in the, in the mundane, everyday thing. And, and he, even though he was running from God, he was experiencing a freedom that they didn't have. And he could actually be the vessel that could carry them into their promised land. And yet, what was in his hand? An ordinary staff. What's in yours? What do you have inside of you that is ordinary it's mundane. It's just what you do. It's kind of like what you're addicted to. It's kind of like what you've learned from the time you were a little girl that you just done as a habit. You, you take it for granted. Not everybody has that. Not everybody has that. And there are people waiting for you to step in and show them what you do. Show them how you do it. Bring them into your life and let let and let you mentor them them they want that you're listening to me come on <laughs> i have my same thing where i'm going this is just who i am i get ex i read a passage of scripture i get a little nugget this is a little nugget isn't it and i get that nugget and i'm just so excited i have to talk about it i've been like this since i was a little kid i kind of laugh because um I, my grandson he's four and a half years old he is such a hoot Many times what he does, he now gets either a device or he gets something and he sits right beside me while I do my schoolwork or while I do my writing or while I do my editing or whatever I'm doing. And um, he'll sit there and he'll get so excited. He has to tell me every little thing about whatever he's doing. And he just talks and talks and talks and talks. And, and I'm like, oh my goodness, that just, that just does something for my heart. It does something for my soul. I just love it so much. And I get to thinking about how, hmm, that's exactly how God feels. That's exactly how God feels. He never thinks I talk too much. In fact, he wants me to just keep on talking to him. Now, sometimes he'd like to, for me to also listen. I'll get more if I will listen and just let him talk. But, but I'm talking about, he loves to hear me talk. He loves to hear me speak and, and share and get excited and, and listen to what he has to say and then just go and tell everybody about it. That is exactly the calling that he put on my life and yours, by the way. I'm just going to tell you, heads up. Matthew 28. You know what I mean? But, <laughs> but what I love here is that we all have our ordinary, the thing that maybe people have devalued. Maybe we've devalued. Maybe we've just not even paid attention that we have something that other people need. What's your tool? What's your ordinary? What's your thing? What's in your hand? What are you carrying that, that, that God is saying, I want that. I want it. I can use it. I can do miracles. I can do great exploits with that. Because you see, it is that ordinary thing, that stick, that tool, that ordinary gift, that ordinary talent, that ordinary ability, that ordinary message. Yeah. That ordinary skill, that, that ordinary story. You don't have to go out there and get a crazy testimony. I'm talking about your story. Your story has got power. It's that thing in your hand. 
you know, you think it's so ordinary and so every day because you live in it and you're certain that, that we're not talking about that. That's what I'm talking about. Come on, come on, that, that there. And you may be thinking, man, who would want to use that? Who'd want to know that? Who's going to waste their time with that? Come on, stop it. Stop it. That is what we're talking about. It's that thing in your hand that is so ordinary, but God can use it in an extraordinary way. Listen to what the meaning of extraordinary is. I think sometimes we read past words, and I want you to hear this. This is what God can do with your ordinary, everyday, mundane, you know, like this is what you do every day. He, he can take that when you offer it up. He can do mighty exploits because it, it becomes supernatural. It becomes extraordinary. And that means it's very unusual. No one else can do it but you. Now, I know some of you, and I don't know, I just feel like somebody's listening to me and they're thinking, but you know what? If I don't do this because I'm really not that good at it, I'm not an expert, I'm not qualified, somebody else could possibly do a way better job. Can I tell you? Nope. Nobody else is going to do it. You don't get a cop out like that. Nope. What you have is very unusual. Just like your thumbprint is your own. It's your own. No one else has one just like it. If you had a twin that looked just exactly like you, their thumbprint's different. And your, your, what's in your hand is literally yours. It's very unusual. It is remarkable. It is exceptional. It is amazing. It's astounding. It's astonishing. It is marvelous. It is wonderful. It is sensational, stunning, incredible. It is unbelievable. It's miraculous. There's not another like you. Come on, is anybody excited yet? I get to tell you this amazing news that what's in your hand is spectacular. It's outstanding. Come on, if I were great you, you'd have all the smiley faces. I'd give you 100 plus, 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 plus. You're, what you have is unforgettable. It's impressive. It's arresting. Someone is needing you and you're going to stop them in the middle of what they are struggling with and you're going to give them an answer. Come on, you guys. This is not a little thing. It's notable. It's noteworthy. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, very good. 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 Whew. It is it is not common, my friends. What you have is so incredibly out of this world. It's so unreal because this is literally a facet of God that is placed inside of you. Each of us were created to be image bearers. We only flourish. We only we only flourish and team when we're teaming, when we are literally letting things flow through us. When we are bearing his image, um, it's not a little thing that's in your hand. So can I ask you what's in your hand? What's in your hand? Don't, don't, don't think that's little. It's literally a facet of God that's in you that's needing to bear his image in this culture. It is a light that's needing to shine bright in the darkness. This is what you're called to, you, you. <laughs> this is who you are. This is who you are. So can I ask you today, will you offer up that, will you offer it up to him? Will you cast it before him? Will you present it to him? Will you let him loose to do what he wants to do through you? Please? Yeah? Yes. What is in your hand, my sweet friend? God wants you to know that you are exactly who he says you are. Yeah. You can do exactly what he wants you to do. And it's that thing in your hand. You have everything God says you have, and he is what, he, he is exactly who he says he is, 
and he will do what he says he will do, he can, he can do what he says he can do. And he can and will do it in and through you. Whoo. Is anybody excited? Here's what his call is. He wants you to step into you, your calling as who you are, who you are. It's enough. It's enough. It's spectacular. It's amazing. It's awesome. It is a facet of him, of God. He has, he is living inside of you and he wants to shine through you. And it is with that thing that's in your hand. Oh, you guys, we're going to dig into this deep again tomorrow. And I want to invite you to come and join me tomorrow for that session. If you missed the past few days, again, they are already loaded, ready for you to dig in right at my YouTube channel. And that, of course, is at cindyrushton.com forward slash YouTube. Do me a favor. Hey, subscribe. Connect with me there. Leave me some feedback. Let, leave me a comment. Let me know that you're listening and what your biggest takeaway is. And be sure not to miss any of our upcoming live events or our podcast, our videos, our online events, um, because this is just part of a bigger series that we are going to be doing regularly. And so if you want to keep abreast of that, you want to be there when we go live, just, hey, get on my mailing list. It's easy, easy. And I promise I will not sell you. I will not share you. you I will protect your email as if it's my own, because guess what? Mine's on there too. But anyway, um, you can sign up for my update list. It's called Stay Connected. And that's found right there at cindyrushton.com. At the very top of the bar, you can click stay connected, sign up, or just scroll down the page and you can sign up there. When you do, I have a free gift for you that's called the power of an hour. And that is ready, waiting for you as my gift right there. Well, you guys, I hope you have an amazing day today. I hope that this begins. This is an invitation to a conversation with God. I hope you just carve out some time to just go sit in his presence. Let him pour over you. Let him fill you up. Let him overflow in and through you. It's going to, this is going to be a day where I believe he wants an appointment with you. And so I hope you have a super day and I'll see you again tomorrow at 2 p.m. Thanks, and I'll see you then.